being caught between a rock and a hard place. Really the story of shoulder impingement if you think about it. We have the rock, which would be the humerus or the arm bone, and then on top of that we have the acromion process, which is the hard place. And in between those two structures we have a bursa and the supraspinatus tendon, which is part of your rotator cuff. And the idea behind shoulder impingement is that the humerus and the acromion are compressing the bursa and the supraspinatus tendon, especially with overhead movements. And when we look at treatment, we're generally focused on either the hard place or the rock, so either the humerus or the acromion process, and not too focused on the tissues in between, but is that the right way to approach treatment? There was a study published in the British Medical Journal that looked at the supraspinatus response to loading in both a painful group and then a non-painful group. And what they measured was the supraspinatus tendon thickness and then also the gap in between the humerus and the acromion process. And what they found was the supraspinatus in the painful group actually increased in thickness all the way up to six hours after exercise and then slowly decreased, returning to baseline about 24 hours after load. Whereas the non-painful group, the supraspinatus thickness actually decreased with load and then returned to baseline at 24 hours. And what this means is that the supraspinatus tendon was actually swelling in the painful group, whereas the non-painful group, it actually decreased in size. And what they found when they looked at the distance between the humerus and the acromion is that in the painful group, that distance was smaller and that remained smaller for a longer period of time versus the non-painful group. Essentially meaning that there was less space for both the bursa and the supraspinatus tendon in between the humerus and the acromion process. The focus has mainly been on that acromion process, so there's maybe a bone spur that's formed which is intruding on that space where the bursa and the supraspinatus tendon are, and that's causing irritation and pain in the shoulder. But if you saw my previous video on shoulder impingement and bone spurs, I'll link that somewhere, it'll pop up right here so you can see it. The surgery to remove the bone spur was actually the same outcome as a fake surgery where they didn't remove the bone spur. So it doesn't really seem that the bone spur is the cause of shoulder impingement. And so when we look at this study on the supraspinatus and its response to loading, it seems to shed a little bit of light on shoulder impingement. So instead of looking at the environment, and what I mean by that is looking at either the acromion process or the humerus. It seems to be there's a problem with the tendon in that it's swelling and that's what's causing the impingement in between those two places. And so when we're looking at treating shoulder impingement, we should focus much more on the supraspinatus and its response to loading. We need to increase its capacity to tolerate load through strengthening and that way it won't swell as much when it's being loaded and therefore less shoulder impingement. And this study also suggests that when we're starting to load the supraspinatus tendon in shoulder impingement, that we need to allow it enough time to adapt to the load. So because it takes 24 hours to return to baseline, we probably shouldn't load it more than once in a 24 hour period. So that way we're not continually causing swelling in the tendon and further irritating that shoulder. In summary, when we're treating shoulder impingement, the focus seems to be less on the acromion process and the structures around the tendon, and seems to be much more focused on the actual tendon itself. Which means that exercise is going to be the main treatment approach, because we need to build strength in that supraspinatus tendon so that it doesn't swell as much when it's being loaded. In other words, we need to focus less on the hard place and the rock and focus more on what's in between that and building that to be stronger than both the rock and the hard place. Thank you for watching this video on shoulder impingement. I hope that you found this information useful. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, which the button should be either over here or over here. Just wherever it is, just click on that subscribe button so you'll see videos in the future.